Hello, hello, my name is Callista and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. In the last episode, we fought in the Provings. We won. We did get a ceremonial helm, however, we gave that to one of our competitors, Franklin Ivo. And we have finally arrived at the feast. Excuse me, madam, your head is getting in the way. There we go. We had finally arrived at the feast and we are about to finally introduce ourselves to Duncan of the Grey Wardens. Hello, Duncan. Greetings, my lady Iducan. It is an honor to meet you at last. The honor is mine, Warden. At last, have you been waiting for me? If you'll excuse me, I know I just said hello to you, but I'm going now. And no, she, she'd be polite. The honor is mine, Warden. I have had the opportunity to recently meet with your father. He speaks highly of you. He says you may be the quickest fighter in all of House Iducan. My father does me great honour. We shall see what happens tomorrow. My father exaggerates. There is no may about it. I am the best. Artin isn't really a fighter. She's more of a diplomat. She like Her, her older brother Treen could and would kick her ass in a fight. My father exaggerates. Your humility aside, I have no doubt you will be a fighter of great renown. We need more Grey Wardens like you. And quickly. Even as the darkspawn weaken here in Ozimor, they are stirring on the surface. A blight has begun. Soon the fight must go beyond the deep roads, lest the darkspawn threaten all the world. I wonder if Father would allow me to join you. I do not know as much as I should about the Grey Wardens. Good, let them leave our city and pester the humans. Artin has no interest in joining the Grey Wardens. And I don't think... she She wants to harbour goodwill with the surface. I don't think... Just like, ah, let them let them go bother the humans. That That's not very neighbourly. I do not know as much as I should about the Grey Wardens. You know of our dedication to destroying the Darkspawn, our frontline presence during a blight. What else would you know? Are there many of my people in the Grey Wardens? Over the centuries, many dwarves have made names for themselves in our order. These days, however, there are fewer Dwarves, and thus even fewer Dwarven Grey Wardens. A pity, since Dwarven Warriors have the most experience fighting Darkspawn. Hmm. Could I join the Grey Wardens and still stay in Orzama? What does joining entail? I wish I could join you. I don't think I could bear such a difficult life. I'm an Iducan. Orzama needs me here. So, the first four all kind of rely an interest in the Grey Wardens that Artin doesn't have. And, hmm. I guess there's no harm in asking what joining entails. That's not necessarily, you know, one or three, which kind of are like, oh, I, I want to join up. What does joining entail? Being a Grey Warden means abandoning all ties to your old life. It means dedicating yourself to destroying the Darkspawn. And Artin could never do that. She could never... She loves Orzammar. She loves her people. And she could never dedicate herself fully to the Darkspawn. I am an Iducan. Orzammar needs me here. Then it is a good thing that you have other paths before you. Some are not so lucky. I wish you luck in the deep roads tomorrow. Show the Darkspawn the might of your people. Thank you, Duncan. And we have a codex. We have two. We have three. <laughs> okay, let's read them. The Grey Wardens. The first blight had already raged for 90 years. The world was in chaos. A god had risen, twisted and corrupted. The remaining gods of Tevinter were silent, withdrawn. What writing we have recovered from those times is filled with despair, for everyone believed, from the greatest archons to the lowliest slaves, that the world was coming to an end. At Weishaupt Fortress in the desolate Anderfels, a meeting transpired. Soldiers of the Imperium, seasoned veterans who had known nothing their entire lifetimes except hopeless war, came together. When they left Weishaupt, they had renounced their oaths to the Imperium. They were soldiers no longer. They were the Grey Wardens. The Wardens began an aggressive campaign against the Blight, striking back against the Darkspawn, reclaiming lands given up for lost. The Blight was far from over. 
But their victories brought notice, and soon they received aid from every nation in Thedas. They grew in number as well as reputation. Finally, in the year 992 of the Tevinter Imperium, upon the Silent Plains, they met the Archdemon Dumat in battle. A third of all the armies of northern Thedas were lost to the fighting, but Dumat fell, and the Darkspawn fled back underground. Even that was not the end. The Imperium once revered seven gods, Dumat, Zazakael, Toth, Andoral, Razakael, Lusakan, and Urthamiel. Four have risen as our archdemons. The Grey Wardens have kept watch through the ages, well aware that peace is fleeting, and that their war continues until the last of the dragon gods is gone. From Ferelden Folklore and History by Sister Patrine, Chantry Scholar. The Blights. I... This is one of my favourite codex entries. Simply... You'll see at the end. My dear Annika, I would not worry about the assembly. Let the nobles sit together and argue over whose house owns the grandest taig. It keeps them from panicking, which they would surely do otherwise, and prevents them from making a greater nuisance of themselves. War is the business of warriors. I would say that the enemy's strategy seems to be changing, but they never appeared to have a strategy before, beyond destroying everything in their path. For weeks, their numbers appeared to be dwindling. There was talk that perhaps we were getting close to wiping them out. We could not have been more wrong. For today, we came upon the body of their main force. I cannot give words to it, Annika. I have never before seen so much death in one place. There were darkspawn beyond counting, and at the heart of the throng, a great beast, as tall as the palace of Orzammar, with breath of fire. A paragon of darkspawn, perhaps, for they seemed to pay it deference. They were leaving, marching towards the mine shafts that lead to the surface. But I knew when I beheld them that once they have devoured what lies above us, they will be back. From the letters of Paragon Iducan, Annika was his, no his wife's name. Which is why I like giving Artin an A name. I, I like to think maybe it's, you know, tradition that at least one child has an A name, perhaps. And characters. Duncan. Men and women from every race, warriors and mages, barbarians and kings, the Grey Wardens sacrificed everything to stem the tide of darkness, and prevailed. Like many others, Duncan gave up his family name when he joined the ranks of the Grey Wardens, a symbolic gesture of cutting ties. He might say that this was a convenience in his case, however. His mother was from the Anderfels, his father from Tevinter. His childhood was spent in the Free Marches and Orlais. His people were everywhere, and his homeland was nowhere. He was given the almost impossible task of leading the Wardens in Ferelden, a kingdom that had thrown their order out 200 years earlier. Facing local suspicion and hostility, he set about finding recruits. Well, he won't, he won't find a suspicion down here. We, we love the Great Wardens down here in Orzammar. I'm not going to read any of the uh, control code codices. There we go. Now then, Father, I have arrived. I'm a little late, but I'm, I'm here. That's what matters, surely. My king, please reconsider. The trade contracts alone could bring great prosperity to our houses. Will we really turn our back on our brothers and a potential fortune in cheap labor because of a political technicality? Denial of the traditions of our people does not qualify as a political technicality. There is more to life than monetary gains, my lords Bimo and Mino. The assembly of Kal Sharak will respect the rule of Orzammar, or they will rot and die alone, surrounded by enemies. Doubtful. Yes, my king. But look, we have company to spare us further wrangling. A trast Vala, my sweet daughter. How fine you look in your grandmother's armor. I hear you were declared champion of the Provings. <laughs> I suppose you were never one to sit by something exciting was going on. Are you ready to be presented to the heads of the noble houses? Of course, father. Well, if I must, is this all really necessary? This is tradition. Of course, father. So dutiful. <laughs> Very well, let us begin. Lords, ladies, grant me a moment of your time. We are here today so I may present to you my second eldest child. 
blessed by the stone, and born of the blood that ran in the veins of the Paragon Idukan. Who would pose a question to the prospective commander? Who seeks to know the prospect better? I have a question. I seek to know the prospect better. Lord Dace, head of House Dace, speak. Lords, ladies, my question concerns the plight of our wayward kin, the so-called service caste. What does the Commander Prospect think is the proper place for these lost souls? They should be respected, but no more. The surface dwellers are less than men. They are as we are and should have their rights returned. So in the previous episode, Lord Dace asked us to uh, basically kind of say, oh, we think they should have their rights returned. However, Lady Helmy, I believe it was. Yes, because her daughter, Adal Helmy, we fought in the Provings, and we kicked her ass, by the way. Basically, she told us that he... Well, the story he told us was that his wife's cousin, who she's very fond of, had joined a a surface expedition they went bankrupt and he wanted to come home but he couldn't because he was castless and he was kind of champion his, championing his cause lady helmy then told us that lord dace had also invested a lot of money in this expedition and so when that went bust he also went bust and this expedition company a lot of their leading members have ancestral ties to I believe it was House Bemo, House Helmy, and House Idukan, and that our houses would be forced to pay them kinship debts. So we could screw him over here. However, Artin knows that he's screwing us over in a way. She knows this. He's playing us. However, she also wants the surfaces to have their rights returned. So she's getting her own way here by... And also, if... If he had just asked us this question without talking to us about it first, she would have said number three anyway. So, even though he is getting personal gain out of this, I think either way it would have looked badly on her. She wouldn't lie. She wouldn't lie and say, oh, no, they're, they're awful people. Fuck those guys. So she's, even though he's playing her, she's still gonna go through with this. They are as we are, and should have their rights returned. Thank you, my lady. I am satisfied. Then if there are no other challenges, I give you Orzammar's next commander. Tomorrow, our newest commander will lead part of a mission to strike a great blow to the Darkspawn. Not only does this recover access to some of our most important minds, but it also allows our honored guest, Duncan, head of Ferelden's Grey Wardens, to strike far into the deep roads. Thank you, King Endrin. While the Darkspawn seem to withdraw, it is only because they are massing on the surface. This could mean a blight, and my men and I will discover the truth. We are honored to have you with us, my friend. Now, feast, drink, and celebrate, for the morning brings battle! As for you, my new commander, find your brother Trian and send him to me. He may be watching the Provings, or getting some rest in his rooms. Of course, father. What do you want with Trian? Can't you send a servant? She, She's a very dutiful daughter, so she she wouldn't question this. Of course, father. Walk well, commander. Not gonna lie, it sounded like a woman fainted in the background when Artin said that the surfacer should have their rights re rights returned. And even though Lady Helmy said, oh, your first act of command, everyone will turn their backs on you, I noticed that everyone still cheered. So I think she was talking BS there. Darkspawn. The surfaces claim that the first Darkspawn fell from heaven. They spin tales of magic and sin but the children of the stone know better. The Darkspawn rose up out of the earth, for it was in the deep roads they first appeared. Creatures in our own likeness, armed and armoured, but with no more intelligence than a Tezpadam. Bestial and savage, I'm pretty sure that Tezpadam is a, um, what the dwarves call the Deep Stalkers. Is that what they're called, Deep Stalkers? Little lizard things with the weird heads. Pretty sure that's what that is. At first they were few, 
easily hunted and slain by our warriors. But in the recesses of the deep roads, they grew in number and in courage. Our distant tigers came under attack, and now it was the army, not a few warriors being sent to deal with the creatures. Victories still came easily, though, and we thought the threat would soon be over. We were wrong, as told by Shaper Zebor. All righty then, Dace. Pay up. That was well spoken. Thank you. You're most certainly welcome. Here is a note of credit for the hundred sovereigns. The Chamberlain at my estates will pay you after the battle tomorrow. Now I must be off to prepare for tomorrow. Do excuse me. So... Knowing that he was kind of screwing us over with that, kind of, not really, but a little bit, I don't think she'd trust him to keep his word for tomorrow. She is going to take that note of credit, give it to a merchant, he'll give her the 100 sovereign, and then the merchant and his patron can take that up with Lord Dace. There's a book here. Orzammar History, Chapter 2. We were losing the war against the Darkspawn. Slowly. A few men at a time, but losing all the same. The warrior caste was dwindling with each generation as more able-bodied men perished in their prime without fathering sons. With each gen generation, more of the deep roads had to be sealed, more tigers lost forever. The kings of Orzammar watched and wondered how long it would be until nothing remained of our people but the memories. And then Paragon carried in a rose from the smith caste with a new weapon, golems. Giant soldiers of living stone and metal, each one was an army. With the Paragon's Golems, we began to retake the lands we had lost. For a while, there was hope that victory, final victory, was coming. But at the height of the war, Paragon Caradin disappeared, and with him, the means to make Golems. Several forays were made into the deep roads to search for the Paragon, but nothing was ever found. Over time, the golems we had were damaged beyond repair, and we began our slide, once again, towards extinction. Orzammar as a kingdom, as told by Shaper Zebor. I, I'm very curious as to what the people, you people, who are watching this... Hello, by the way. I've already said hello, but still, hello again. I'm very curious as to what you make of King Endrin. Because he seems to be a very good father he seems to have very good rapport with you know the the middle child however in my opinion he's a really shitty king Ooh, hello thank you anything else in here nope literally what we just saw of him doesn't exactly show him in a good light especially kalsharok intrigues me they survived for how many centuries alone with no support and yet they've survived meanwhile Orzammar which has been trading with the surface it will be done has really fallen into uh, not exactly disrepair but we're kind of screwed as i mentioned before Artin is going to uh, quickly head to a merchant to get that gold Lord Dace promised her Orzammar is is falling you know people are dying and the darkspawn aren't being pushed back i believe the darkspawn are gaining territory meanwhile kalsharok kalsharok lives so for endrin just to kind of think that oh kalsharok will bend the knee to us after all of this time on their own they'll bend the knee and they'll respect the rightful rule of ozma i think is incredibly short-sighted my lady has returned is there something here that interests you perhaps let me see please look as you will okay we can sell this we can sell this i know what this nature crystal is for but i don't think artin would so we can sell that and the shield and the boots we didn't get anything new there so this note of credit 
This note bears the seal of House Dace and Ronus Dace's signature. It, promise, it promises 100 sovereigns payable to the holder. As you can see though, however, it's only going to give us 25. So I'm going to show you how to do a money cheat in this game. This is the only time I am ever going to use cheats. I am using mods. If you've looked in the description box below, they're all listed there. However, they are only bug fixes and just like general appearance stuff. Like I have a, a mod that gives the Tranquil that brand that they have in Inquisition and in Dragon Age 2. Everything else though is just bug fixes. This is the only time I am ever going to use a cheat in this entire game, okay? If I can remember how to do it. Whoops. Okay. Okay, I'll figure this out. I'll figure it out eventually. There we go. Buy it back. Okay, so you need to... That's my right, this is my left. You need to left click. Whoop, you need to left and right click, kind of at the same time. Drag it over. There we go. And left and right, drag it over. There we go, we got our 100 sovereigns. And now it's the merchant's job to take that up with Lord Dace. I'm not risking him uh, screwing us over in a more monetary way. Now then, the father asked us to go and find Trian. So that is what she, what Artin will do. Father mentioned that he might be in his rooms. Okay, that was father's room. Trian's room was down here. Hello. Hello, guardsman. Very well. And now this room is open. And again, Artin is gonna snoop. Ooh. Very nice. And Trian's journal. Let's have a read. Trian's journal. 21st of Herventus. Notice. Excuse me, I. <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit that out. 21st of Ferventus. Noticed Gorm running around trying to get pieces of my sibling's ceremonial armour ready for the feast. Stopped him and asked how preparations were going. He mentioned that one of the bracers had a spot of tarnish on it. Was quite impressed at his dedication. He is most loyal to our family. 23rd of Ferventus. Was on way to discuss the treaty with father when came across a messenger waiting in the hall. On being asked why he was loitering around the... Excuse me. On being asked why he was loitering around the royal palace, he mumbled something about having a gift for the new commander and asked me, begged almost, to pass along some object or another to my sibling. Me. The heir to the throne of Orzammar does not run errands for a messenger. Must have been new on the job. Had him thrown out, however, still reeling from the gall of it. This is what the weapon merchant mentioned. He sent someone to deliver the dagger, but Trian had him thrown out. Learned later that Balin had told the messenger that quickest way to get things to our sibling was through me and had made him wait until I came by. So unseemly for a Prince of Orzmar to place such tricks, he needs to grow up and understand that, as royalty, he has responsibilities. 24th of Ferventis found Balin's little playmate again lurking about the corridors outside his bedroom this morning. Must have been trying to steal something, or already had. Bosom seemed fuller than most decent ladies. Trian, why were you looking at her chest? Some jewels hidden in the bodice? Anyway, pretended not to see her. Would have been awkward otherwise. Wish Balin would keep her confined to his room if he must have her around. Little brother is too concerned with fun and pleasure and not serious enough about his duties as prince. Must talk to him about discipline when have time. Unfortunately, much too busy with the many tasks father has laid upon my shoulders. 26th of Ferventis. Remember to send small token of gratitude to Jalia Helmy. Alliance between Helmy and Iducan must be kept strong. Lady Jalia will, of course, accept proposal of marriage, since we'll be king sooner or later, but never hurts to be polite and keep the lady happy. Hear that there are some surfaces selling silks. Maybe we'll send second out for something nice. Jalia's favourite colour? Turquoise. 28th of Ferventis. Heard, that there, heard about there being provings held in our sibling's honour. They did not have provings for me at my first commission, and I am the heir. What is going on? 
must go watch these provings, make presence felt. Ozama must not forget that I am to be her next king. From the Journal of Tree and I do can oof. That's that's a bit of a low blow. To to realize that I think it's pretty obvious that their father favors Artin over either of these two. Oof. It's like it's like when your little sister has like an amazing birthday party that you know that your parents have planned out when when it was your birthday you only got like you know like a three quid cake from tesco's you got that caterpillar cake meanwhile your sister has a party clown a bouncy castle and they've ordered some like really fancy birthday cake it would just it would just break your heart a little bit so you're a commander now in name at least shouldn't you be attending our king father Father wants to see you, Trian. You two were not at the feast. Balin, how was your day? She's not going to ignore Trian's question. And I don't think she's going to bring up the fact that neither of them were at the feast. Like I, as I mentioned, I can see this being a bit of a sore spot for Trian. So it's, it is understandable that he wouldn't be there. Father wants to see you, Trian. Of course he does. We must discuss strategy before tomorrow's battle. Balin, stay here and stroke the new commander's conceit if you like, but then get to bed. I honestly don't know how you put up with him. He's not that bad. My patience is beginning to wear thin. Smile, nod, do my duty. Smile, nod, do my duty. I wish that sense of duty and family loyalty was shared by our elder brother. What are you talking about? Is this something I want to hear? You sound serious, Balin. He, I don't think she's used to her little brother being serious. He's, she kind of knows him to be quite jokey and jovial. So this would be very odd for her. You sound serious, Balin. Unfortunately, I am. Trian has begun to move against you. I never thought his much proclaimed honor would allow him to actually act on his jealousy. Big sister. Trian is going to try to kill you. What? How do you know? He recognizes I'm a threat. Good. That seems a little far-fetched. Everything we've heard about Trian so far is that... He's an ass, yes, but he does seem to have a very strong sense of honor and family duty. That seems a little far-fetched. I wouldn't have believed it myself if I hadn't overheard him giving orders to his men. Trian's decided you're a threat to his taking the throne. Maybe he's right. This is insane. I refuse to discuss this. True, Trian's a pomp and ass and everyone likes me better. I'm not the heir he is. How am I a threat to Trian? I think she understands why she's a threat to Trian. She's... I, I don't know if it's been mentioned yet, but I know that the middle child is the king's second. Balin is Trian's second, Artin is her father's second, so I imagine she spends a lot of time around the assembly. She probably knows them quite well. So she understands why she's a threat. But I don't I don't particularly like the first two. I'm not the heir, he is. Trian's the named prince, but only the assembly can proclaim a king. It would be unusual for the Assembly to ignore the King's choice, but it does happen. The founder of House Bimo became a paragon and king in one move from the Assembly, and he was a commoner. That was an extraordinary case, but at least a half dozen times the Assembly named a lesser family member, or even someone from another house, as king. Twice, it was a woman. So Trian thinks the Assembly would prefer me? Well, I would make a good ruler. Enough, I won't listen to this. So Trian thinks the Assembly would prefer me? Look at it from his perspective. You're more personable than he's ever been. True. You entered the provings held in your own honor just for glory and to please the crowds. If you win glory against the Darkspawn tomorrow, it will only strengthen the case for you as the next heir. Trian fears Father will replace him on the spot. If not, the Assembly will surely turn against him when Father dies. You know his pride will never allow him to step aside. What should I do? Trian needs to die. I won't fight Trian. What's your angle in this? Oof. This behavior is very out of character for Balin. Artin knows her little brother enough to know that this... 
this is ha- not how he usually behaves, and that's that's making her very suspicious. What's your angle in this? It seems Trian has shown that brothers can't always be trusted. I am next in line. If Trian succeeds in his plot against you, how long do you think I'll live? What should I do? Gorm, what do, what do you say? If I strike at Trian, will you back me? I won't fight Trian. Uh, Gorm, what do you say? Permission to speak freely? Of course, my friend. Trian would make a terrible king, but no one wants to say it. Oof. He has just enough backing in the assembly to make it ugly when your father dies, but not enough to become king. Killing him now makes your house stronger and saves a great deal of bloodshed later. I feel so bad for Trian. Very well, Trian dies. We'll wait to see what Trian does. No, I won't fight a brother. Again, Trian... I think one of the few things that Artin admires about her big brother is that he is honourable. Despite all the times he's tried to control her, that he's put her down, that he's told her her only value is as breeding stock and she shouldn't be fighting anything, he is honourable. And I don't think... I don't think for a second that she believes he would move against her. One, as I said, he's he's way too honourable. If he wanted to take her out, he'd challenge her to approving and take her out that way. Two... I don't think she I don't think she thinks that Trine has the necessary intrigue capabilities to pull off a plan like this. She simply she simply doesn't believe this. No, I I won't fight a brother. You are my elder. I'll respect any decision you make, but please be careful. I don't want to lose my dearest sister. I'm glad for your concern, Balin, thank you. Trian won't do anything stupid, you worry too much. Yeah. Trian won't do anything stupid. I hope you're right, but my heart says this will end badly. I'm taking your place as Father's second, so I'll be at hand tomorrow. For now, try to get some sleep. May the Paragon smile down on you. You too, Garm. You too. <sighs> I mean, Trian doesn't have any friends. Who would he ally with? to concoct this this scheme. It doesn't make sense. You okay, loading screen? You okay, game? There you go. Trion and his men will clear the way for the Grey Wardens to descend into the easternmost caverns. Those caverns are still infested by the worst of the Darkspawn. We cannot risk our own troops in there. Understood, Lord Haramont. We should be able to sense the Darkspawn, and avoid them once the way is open. May the Paragons favor you, and the stone catch you if you fall. Come then! Glory awaits! Balin, you and your men will second the King, clearing the main road. Don't you think it looks a little cowardly to allow these humans to take our place where the fighting is thickest? Are you questioning the battle plan? Of course not. I'm sure your caution is for the glory of us all. Enough, Palin. Take your men and make ready. Paramount and I need to have words with your sibling. Ooh. Good luck, my sister. What a your dirty father look. has a special mission for you. In the eastern deep roads, there is a secret door carved into the stone. The door leads to a tie, abandoned long ago by your ancestors. The Darkspawn have made it impossible to reach it. My father believed that the shield of the Paragon Iduken remains in that tag, under the stones of the central room. Reclaim the shield, and glory will be yours. To glory, I'm supposed to do this alone? What else is in the tag? The shield of Iduken would be quite the find. As I mentioned, Artin is very proud of her heritage. The shield of Iduken would be quite the find. We've sent two scouts ahead to make sure the tunnels are cleared. But be careful. One of the scouts will meet you at the first crossroads you come to. The second will be further in. When you get to the door, use your signet ring to open it. Questions? Meet the scouts, find the door, grab the shield, got it. No, I'll be back shortly. Where do we go from there? 
I don't think she has any questions. Meet the scouts, find the door, grab the shield. Got it. Very good. The crossroads where you meet the first scout will be the rendezvous point. There you can present the shield to the lords and demonstrate the strength of Idukin. May the ancestors watch over you, my child. Why the sad look? Hmm. And I am just about out of time. However, I am going to read this codex first. There isn't a dwarf alive who remembers the deep roads as they once were. They were the network of tunnels that joined the tides together. To be honest, it isn't even right to give them such a simple term as tunnels. They are works of art, with centuries of planning demonstrated in the geometry of their walls, with the statues of the paragons that watch over travellers, with the flow of lava that keeps the deep roads lit and warm. The cloud gazers upon the surface talk of the Imperial Highway, built by the Magisters of old, a raised walkway that crossed thousands of miles, something that could only have been built by magic. Perhaps it is comp comparable to the deep roads, although we dwarves didn't need magic. I suppose it doesn't matter anymore. The Darkspawn rule the Deep Roads now. When Orzammar sealed off the entrances to the Deep Roads, abandoning everything that lay out there, we handed over the kingdom that was to those black bastards forever. To think that there are Genlocks crawling over Bonamar now, tearing down our statues and defiling our greatest works. Corruption covers everything we built out there. Every dwarf who goes out and comes back says that it gets worse with each passing year. The foulness spreads a little further. And the cloud gazers think the darkspawn are gone just because they aren't spilling out onto the surface? <laughs> One day, when Ozmar is gone for good, they'll find out differently. Those darkspawn won't have anywhere else to go but up, and they'll do it. The surface folk will have themselves a blight that will never end. Transcript of a conversation with a member of the Dwarven Mining Cast, 890 Blessed. And with that, I'm just about out of time. In the next episode, we shall see if we can find the Shield of Iduken and claim glory for our house. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.